So first things first, we're going to tape down our paper before we get started so that it doesn't buckle and bend too much while we're working on it. This time I'm going to be a little bit more careful on my edges to try and make sure they're all the same size so that if I want to frame this up when I'm finished, I can. You can measure this out and draw lines on here if you want to be super precise. Um, I just like to eyeball it because that's where I'm at for today's demo. There, down the side. And again, if you don't have a surface you can leave this tape to, um, then you can always put it on the back of a cookie sheet or a baking pan, um, anything that it fits on where it will have a flat surface um, that's not roughed up in the background. So today we're going to be looking at doing a nighttime sky. You can pick the palette colors of your choice. I happen to like it when they're more of the um, purple and red and blue type colors. You're going to want a larger paintbrush for this today because we are filling a lot of space on this particular project that we're working on. And I am running out of my ultramarine. I'm going to need a lot more for this project, so I'm going to put some in here before I get started. Most of the palettes that I sent out in our art kits are pretty loaded. Um, I keep a smaller amount in here just because I change out my colors more frequently and go through them a lot more. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab some of this ultramarine and you want to keep it really thick for this project. You don't want it to be light. We're doing a nighttime sky, right? So when you're working through and on this, you're going to want to pick up a lot of that. I'm going to throw some Payne's Gray in here that we had worked with earlier. The deeper, darker parts of the sky. Okay. And I like to keep it at a little bit of an angle. Um, and a lot of the, the space shows, right, when they're showing Earth and they're showing the Aurora Borealis or the Big Dipper or the nighttime sky and all that kind of stuff, um, they tend to show it at an angle. I'm going to go in and throw some of the red in here. I'm going to work that wet on wet to turn it into a purple color. Like that. A little bit here and there. Mine's almost more of a sunset. We do it this way. And then if I want to work more blue back into it for more purples. I don't have an actual purple. I need to make purples when I'm working with this. Get more ultramarine. And again, don't be afraid to go rich and heavy on the colors for this. nighttime sky, so that tends to be much richer and darker. Do a pop of color here at the end again. Okay, now what I have down on here, um, looks very bubbly, right? And it looks more like clouds than it does sky. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back in with a lot of water loaded into my brush, and I'm just gonna tap on sections while the brush is sideways. And I'm gonna add a whole bunch of water to the surface to help these run together more so that they start losing that defined edge. And this is gonna make your paper pretty wet. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. It's not gonna stay super dry. And it's really going to make those colors run, which is what we want to have happen. So we want it to look more like a nighttime sky and less like a bunch of clouds. So we're going to let those colors mingle um, and kind of twirl into one another and do their own thing. If you want it to be a little bit more side to side when you're working on it, don't put full pressure on your brush, but you can work it more like this and drag your water a little bit back and forth, depending on what look you want. When you're finished with everything, if it gets too polka dotty, you know, go back, dry off your brush. You can pick that back up a little bit. Add some color back in. And then you can drag side to side. Kind of like that. 
Um, if you get too much water and you get a buckle in here like this, you have to go in very gently with your paper towel and just take up that extra water. You can still see it still does the nighttime sky thing. If you're really gentle, keep an eye on it while it's doing all of its stuff for a couple of minutes. You might have to go in and gently tap anything that's getting too dark around edges or places where it's starting to fold. If you have a blow dryer, now's the time to get that out and to help this surface dry. If not, you're gonna let this sit for about an hour or two before you come back in and you do the next part with the silhouettes and the stars. So depending on what you have left for today, you're either gonna take a break, go work on something else, and then come back to this or pull out your blow dryer and go ahead and dry it for a couple minutes. Remember, you want it on high heat, but low blow because you don't wanna move the paint around on your, per on your surface on purpose for this project. Now that it's dry, we want to go back in and we want to add the stars. And the stars are white, of course. So we're going to dip up a little bit of water, mix it in with the white that we have. You don't need very much water because white tends to be a lot thicker, right? So load up your brush and then you're going to do that same splatter technique across it for your stars. Now I got some big ones on here. So I'm gonna have to go back and fix that a little because those are too big to be stars. They're a little too chunky. So I can just take my paper towel and go in and conveniently pick some of the larger ones that I don't want. They'll pop right off the paper. There we go. So now that it has more of that star-like look to it, I'm gonna let this dry or use my blow dryer on it for a few once the stars are dry, if you're happy with the ones that are still showing, because remember watercolor is transparent, so if a lot of them don't show up, you might want to mix some more white and do it again. Um, then you can go ahead and move forward with the next part, and that's adding in your silhouette. Um, so any place along the bottom, I'm going to be doing some pine trees. So I'm going to be using that Payne's Gray, a nice, deep, rich color. It's not quite black, but it looks pretty close to black when you're working with it. And I'm going to be adding in pine trees, which means... Um, kind of on a hillside is what I like to do. So I just start by doing some of the trunks first so that I can get an idea of what that hillside might look like. I might go back up on the other side again. And this gives me just some guidelines as to where the trees are going to end up going while I'm working. So I'm going to keep most of my sky in there since that's the main focus. And then a little bit down here of that hillside and pine trees. Freshen up my paint a little bit. It dried out from my blow dryer. Um, the part that's underneath the pine trees, you're going to keep a nice rich Payne's gray so that it's the silhouette, right? Your mountains in here, other trees are in here. And I keep that pulling and pulling on here a lot um, to sort of keep the hillside in. Plus, it makes it look like there's the tops of other trees sticking up down there. Oh, I want to make sure they don't get too fat when I'm working on that. And I'm going to pull it off the bottom over the tape. And still, you can see where the white reactivates once in a while in my stars and tries to come back through. There we go. Just go back in with another layer and touch those up. And then I can go back, grab some of that Payne's Gray. Yep, moving on my palette, and then I'm gonna add, kind of like we did our trees in our other lesson, where they just kind of taper in and out, like trees do. I'm gonna start with the tops, and then move my way down into some of the other trees. Remember to leave some space in between, so you can see some night sky once in a while between the branches. The trees kind of grow thicker as they move down. Doing that squiggly, squiggly dot type line when I'm working on this. Remember to keep your paint nice and thick for this part because you don't want the underlayment to show through in the other colors. You want to keep it just your pine trees. And if you have trouble controlling the small brush, you can always go to an ultra thin brush from your set if you would like, if you want to get 
really particular in making sure that these look a little bit more like needles or smaller boughs of trees. You're welcome to do so. Just want to make sure that these ones show up on the iPad when we're working on painting. I'm just going to work it all the way back and forth until you get your pine trees or your oaks, whatever it is you would like to have in there, all the way across. Again, if you have any stars showing up, you might have to go back and add a little bit more paint to those. And then I like to rinse out my brush and then go back in with just some water across the bottom. Just remember that helps to move some of the paint out of the way, so it'll give this a little bit more depth as it dries. You can even thin it out, wipe it on there just to make it look like maybe there's some other trees kind of in the moonlight at the bottom. And that's re-wetting that paint down there and doing a little bit of scumbling, kind of that scrubby feel to it to lift the paint back out in those areas. Like that. And you're going to let it dry and peel off your tape when you are finished.